Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Meditations with Josh and Friends. Picking up our study of Samson today, and we are in chapter 14. So yesterday I gave you sort of an introduction to uh, how Samson's birth is relevant to the people of Israel, how God, uh, Samson himself, was an answer to the people who were crying out to God after being oppressed for 40 years by the Philistines. And, um, and now we have Samson being born, and it says that God blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him in Mahana Dan, which is the village of Dan. Um, and 14 opens up with Samson going down to a town called Timnah. And while he's in Timnah, he sees this beautiful Philistine woman. He comes back, he tells mom and dad, hey, I saw this Philistine woman, she's gorgeous, right? You gotta get her for me to be my wife. And mom and dad are pretty apprehensive about this. They're like, really, a Philistine woman? Like, is there not any other woman here among your people, our people, that, that pleases you? Like, come on. And he says, yeah, no, uh, that's the one I want, so go and get her for me, she pleases me. Well, let's pause for a second here and understand why mom and dad were apprehensive about this. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 7, God specifically tells the Israelites to drive out the people who inhabited the land of Canaan, the promised land, and specifically says, do not intermarry with them. Don't give your daughters to their sons and don't, have, don't take their uh, daughters for your sons. And so... They're apprehensive because they're, they're about to go against this. So they come down, uh, they, they agree reluctantly, and they're traveling to Timnah, him and his father. And uh, suddenly this young lion attacks Samson. And the spirit of the Lord comes upon Samson, gives him the superhuman strength. He tears it to shreds, uh, and he just leaves it on the side of the road. Doesn't tell anybody about it, but he continues on. And uh, he and his father go down, and they scope out this, this lovely young lady who's uh, presumably going to be his wife. And uh, it says that they're probably making arrangements, you know, marriage arrangement arrangements, and uh, then they go back home. They come back again for the second time, and Samson sees the carcass of the lion, and it's got all these bees that are inside of it. And they've made uh, a bunch of honey, and he scoops it down, he scoops down, he bends down, scoops up the honey, eats it, and then takes some to his parents. They eat it, but he doesn't tell them that it comes from the carcass of this lion that he destroyed. Pause. Okay, why is that significant? Remember yesterday I said that the angel of the Lord who appeared to Samson's mother said that he was supposed to be a Nazarite from birth to death. So his entire life, he was supposed to... Uh, be live in accordance with the Nazarite vow. Well, the Nazarite vow was to abstain from any food or drink that came from the vine and to set yourself apart, right? A lot of, uh, it was akin to like being a priest in, in a lot of ways because they could, don't touch any dead bodies, that would desecrate them and it would break their vow. And so he's, he's touching the dead body of this lion who he's slain. And we see that he's going to touch more dead bodies because he kills a bunch of people. But anyway, he marries this girl and uh, he comes into to the festival. And uh, the, the local men there, it says they, they saw him. And then 30, 30 men came to the wedding, which isn't un -tip, unusual, right? There's like a lot of people that go to weddings. But maybe because they see him, his physical stature, his size, he's a big dude, he's empowered by God, they're a little intimidated, so they call for some backup, like, hey, send a few more boys over here just in case this guy gets a little rowdy. So they do. Then he presents this uh, riddle to them, which was a normal pastime back in the ancient world, you know, pr presenting riddles and then having people solve the riddles. But he does this sort of brazenly. He says, he says, uh, let me now put a riddle to you. If you can explain it to me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 linen garments and 30 festal garments, like changes of clothes. But if you cannot explain it to me, then you shall give me 30 linen garments and 30 festal garments. So they said to him, all right, cool. What's the riddle? Give it to us. And he says to them, out of the eater comes something to eat. 
out of the strong comes something sweet. And so for three days, they're going back and forth, back and forth. They can't explain the riddle. On the fourth day, they go to Samson's wife. They kind of corner her and they're like, hey, look, uh, we can't figure it out. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to go find out the answer to this riddle because we, we can't pay this guy. We can't give him all these garments, right? We'll be, we'll be bankrupt. He's going to take all our money from us. So either you figure it out and tell us uh, or we're going to burn your house down. In fact, we're going to burn your father's house down. Uh, how'd you like that? So she freaks out, right? She's, just, she's scared. So she goes and she puts on this, this theatrical sort of like, oh, tears, tears. How, you, how can you say you love me? You know, you've presented this riddle to my people, but you haven't told me the answer. And Samson responds like, I haven't even told my parents the answer. Why should I tell you the answer? And so she's like nagging and nagging and nagging. And finally, on the seventh day, uh, he says, fine, tells her the answer. She goes back. She tells these, these thugs who are, who are uh, threatening her. And then they come and basically give him the exact same answer that she just told them, which is the same answer that he told her. So he knows right away that there's been some, some shady stuff going on. And um, his response to them is, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. So he knows right away, like, oh, okay, you want to play like that? You want to play dirty? Guess what? I got something for you. So he goes down uh, to a town called Ashkelon. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he killed 30 men of the town, took their spoil, and gave the festal garments to those who had, who had explained the riddle. So he's making good on his uh, bargain that he proposed to them, but he's doing it in a, in a pretty shady way, right? Like absolutely no moral character in this guy whatsoever. Uh, he goes down to the neighboring village, who aren't his people, right? They're Philistine people. They're from the, the Ashkelon town. And he just kills 30 random dudes, uh, takes all their stuff, and he's like, here, fine, here's, here's your stuff. And then the chapter closes out with these words. In hot anger, he went back to his father's house, and Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his best man. So he's like totally done with this woman, who initially was sort of the, the reason for all of this. He saw this pretty girl, pretty girl uh, mom and dad, that's the one. And then she goes and she annoys him to the point where, uh, annoys him and then betrays him. And he's like, I'm done with you. And he just gives her away like, she, like she's a possession. Didn't mean anything to him. So uh, we can already see the, the shape of Samson's character forming into somebody who is uber strong. God's going to do some work through him, but uh, is definitely not a, a, a man after God's own heart. So... Uh, hope you enjoyed today's study. If you have any questions, let me know. Tomorrow we'll be in chapter 15 if you want to read ahead. And uh, I'll see you then. I love you guys. Bye.